Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm today's host, Coleman Hodges, and joining us, I have the pleasure of introducing the 2023 Long Course Meters World Champion in the 100 Freestyle for the first time, Mr. Kyle Chalmers. What's up, man? How's Thanks, it going? Thanks for having me on. this little before but your first uh your first world title in the 100 long course freestyle um and you got to couple that with your first world long course world title in the foreign free relay too um it was it was a heck of a meet for for the aussies uh for yourself just as a whole you know having a little bit to reflect on it um how are you feeling about it what what are your takeaways it was it was an incredible week from the aussies starting right from yeah the start of the program where Sammy Shaw got up there and won the 400 freestyle, and then that just carried through that first night with Ariane, then winning winning a gold medal and breaking a world record. The women's 4 one freestyle relay, breaking a world record, winning, and then for us uh, to stand up there in the relay and um, and win was uh, probably my highlight and most special, special part of the week. Um, on my Instagram, I put it up there, but 2015 was my first world championships, and I was selected just to swim the relay. Uh, we missed the final that year, so meant we missed the automatic qualification for the Olympics in Rio as well, which was a challenge. Uh, 2017, I didn't go because of my heart surgery, so um, the boys swam and unfortunately got disqualified. 2019, I was a back part of the team. We got a bronze medal, which was a huge achievement. Uh, I just swam the heat of that team. Last year, we got silver. I swam the heat and final just to make sure we got through. And then, yeah, to stand on the top of the podium. This year, with three great mates and um, two of those guys being super young that are gonna that are coming through and going to be even better next year is very exciting. And, um, yeah, I was... Mate, it was, it was the best way to start the competition for me, I think. Uh, put us in a really great spot um, as a team, but also for me, swimming 46.5 seconds gave me that uh, confidence I needed going into my hundred freestyle. Yeah, we we talked. I, I talked. I spoke with Sam Short not too long ago, and he had said after that four hundred freestyle, uh, some vets in you and Emma McKeon had kind of given him the advice of like, you got to put it behind you. You know, like winning a world title is great in the four hundred freestyle, no less, on the first day of the meet. But you got a big schedule. Uh, you you got to kind of you know control those emotions. Um. And, you know, how, how easy was it to take your own advice in that regard of just it being such a big moment, like you said, that your, your favorite moment of the meet, um, but it coming at the very beginning of the meet when you know there's still a lot of racing to go. It's always a massive challenge, but I think for me, I was so lucky that I had two days off um, after the 4 by one freestyle, so I could enjoy that moment a little bit more. Like, you know, normally I'm, I'm very swim the race, do my media, get the medal, get in and do my cool down as quickly as I can, eat some food and try and get it, get to sleep as quickly as I can. I'm, it's it's always about preparing for the next day. And when it's an eight-day competition, that becomes very challenging and tiring. But after the 4 by one freestyle, I was able to say, I'm going to slow this down. I'm going to enjoy this moment. I'm going to do the media with the boys. I'm going to enjoy my time up on the podium and make sure I get around the other eight guys from the two other countries um, that are in the in the uh what do you call it metal room with us um and yeah just take my time doing it all so i can enjoy the moment because i know there's been a whole lot of times in my swimming career where it has been as soon as that race is done turn to, to my mindset turns to day two in my next race and i want to cherish those moments and slow down and enjoy them so that you know we work so so hard to to be there and it's something that who knows i may never achieve again um so you want to be able to remember and have a good time but Sammy Short was incredible. Um, a guy so young, you know, to to then back it up in the 800 freestyle and, and swim so well and get a silver medal and then on the last night have the 1500 final. It's um, very challenging for those long distance guys. I think, you know, peaking on day one and then having to back it up again on day eight. I find it hard enough having to swim 100 freestyle on day one and then day eight again. But um, he's got a he's got a very bright future ahead of him. And, um, you know, I was I was just thrilled to 
kind of watch him through the training camp as well. Like he was so amazing in Saga where we were on our training camp and he was talking the talk and I didn't want him getting too ahead of himself, but I was loving it. And it gave me that boost of confidence that I needed too. And um, and then he delivered on night one. And yeah, it's it's probably one of my more special swimming moments to to witness. That's awesome. I mean, and, you know, uh, he's 19 years old. You know, it, it seems like the Aussies have a very young team. Um, yeah. Yeah. It- there's some there's some amazing young boys coming through, which is really exciting. Obviously, it's always been about the girls and the young girls coming through. And but you know, to have Sammy Short, Isaac Cooper, Flynn Southam, um, Kai Taylor, like there's there's a list of young guys that are coming through and swimming fast and swimming really well. And uh, I know that with twelve more twelve months more of development, that they're going to be even better for it next year. And just having that experience this year, racing at the World Champs, and then. I think most of them are doing World Cups as well and just challenging, challenging, challenging themselves against, um, you know, the best swimmers from around the world. They're going to yeah reap the rewards for it next year. Yeah, absolutely. And just, you know, seeing the success they had, um, you know, Flynn being part of that relay, Isaac Cooper getting into the 50 free final uh, was was awesome for, for me to see as a spectator. Um, but yeah, just those and obviously Sam Short, uh, getting a hat trick in the distance free events um, and, and being a world champion on night one. Um, yeah. It's so yeah, bright future, but anyway, back to you. Yeah. Uh, so, so moving, moving past that 400 free relay. Um, mm-hmm. Tell me, tell me about your mentality going into this hundred freestyle. Um, I, I think at this point in the meet um, we'd seen the defending world champ, David Popovich kind of off of, off of what he had been at last year in the 200 freestyle. Um, and you had a really, you had a really stacked field where, um, a lot of guys maybe were presenting challenges, you know, um, certainly challenges to podium. Um, what, what was your mentality heading into that swim? Yeah, I think the 100 freestyle is always going to be a tough event and there's always going to be guys come out of nowhere and perform and do so well. So for me, I knew that I had to swim a good, uh, heat, heat swimming hasn't always been my strength so i knew that i had to be under 48 seconds uh, for that for that morning swim and um get myself in the right kind of mental state to be able to do that so for me i had to get up i had to have a coffee and get myself ready to swim a heat fast um i've only been under 48 seconds twice this year uh i've tried to do it in the morning in, in australia a couple times this year and been 48 zero so um i knew that there was you know i think there was 18 guys entered with a pb of under 48 seconds so it just shows the where the world is at the moment in that event it's crazy the depth that we've got so um so yeah got got through the heat uh i knew the semi-final i'd be a whole lot faster because i swim better at night time um had a little coffee uh just before it just to get myself again into the right mood um try swim a little bit faster and i knew that there was there were so many good guys swimming that event. Uh, Matthew Richards obviously was right next to me in the heat and the semi final. Uh, he'd won the two hundred the day before, so being able to kind of I guess pace off of him and see where he was at was was good. And um, and then yeah, I kind of I knew I had something special in me in the final. I'm a person that really lifts for those occasions. I think my three fastest times I've ever swum have been in in finals. Um, I went forty seven zero eight in Guangzhou and then in the in Tokyo in the Olympics. So and then that was my third fastest time I've ever swam was this year at the at the World Championships final. So for me, my mindset was more so just about swimming the race. I think um you know, I think people really remember who wins races and wins gold medals rather than the time as much any, you know, like obviously time matters, but um yeah, it's about it's about winning the race. So my mindset was just yeah, putting myself in the best possible situation I could be in for the final. So I wanted one of those middle lanes, um, which I wasn't able to have in Tokyo, which I think held me back a little bit because I was in lane seven, whereas this time I was in lane five, which worked out perfectly in my favor. And I just had to, you know, probably think about what I was doing and what I've been working on all year, which was kind of getting off to a bit of a slower start but being a bit more controlled on the first 25 because this year I've been going out a whole lot faster than I have uh previously so I've been going out about 227 228 um this year whereas I knew I had to be at 230 if I was going to swim my swim my best time um and yeah just just being confident in myself not getting carried away with what the other boys were doing and and back my fitness and 
ability in. I know I'm probably the fittest I've ever been. Uh, I've had a really good good season leading up to that point. Um, so my, my, my mentality was really good. I think for me, I was able to stay really relaxed, really calm, which was nice. I've been in that situation a few times now, you know, going through the heats, the semis, the finals. I've had the the pressure and expectation on me uh, plenty of times now. And I just enjoyed the moment, enjoyed the experience. You know, Matt Richards is one of my great mates. So I kind of had a good chat to him in the marshalling room and it didn't feel like a world championship final. I think doing the World Cup circuit the last two years has made um, a world championships just feel like a slightly bigger World Cup. So um, for me, I was able to yeah just have a lot of fun and enjoy that moment and then enjoy my moment afterwards too. So that's, uh, can you can you dissect that a little more of uh, during the season you were going out in two seven two eight you but you knew this in this race you you had to be out in three zero um, mm-hmm. why the, why was that you know why why kind of practice going out faster if you knew in this race you were going to be out quite as fast. Yeah, so my mindset this year has been I need to work on my dive. So if I have a good dive, then I'm going to be up with everyone and I want to be at 15 as fast as I can, which I've tried I tried at nationals and um and at our trials. And then, you know, my stroke rate's up a lot higher. So I'm working a lot harder for it because I'm that that was my mindset. So then my back end of my race was being affected. I was I was becoming a whole lot more lethargic and struggling to finish that last 20 meters, which for me, my whole career is always my back end's always been my strength. Like that's where I've always won my races in that last 20 meters, just staying consistent throughout the whole race. So for me, I had to definitely reset after trials where um I was out a whole lot faster, which took away from my back end. Um and that's what I tried doing and working on through those relays and through the heats and through the semifinals at at Worlds. So I was confident that if I was able to you know, travel consistently uh, over that 100 metres at the same sort of speed that that's, um, you know, normally the person that has the fastest back end in 100 freestyles, the guy that wins. So that's that's what I pride myself on and, um, yeah, was able to do again. And that's what I've been training for that last, you know, that month in between trials and the major, major comp. Yeah. I mean, not only did you have the, the fastest back in 50, I think it's tied for the second fastest back in 50, all time ever, <laughs> uh, which yeah, pretty, pretty stout accomplishment. Um, can you, can you tell me if you remember anything about that last 50 in, in that hundred free final, you know, I mean, did, did you, uh, did you know that you were in a pretty good spot when you flipped at the 50? Well, so I flipped to the 50 in eighth. So I was equal seventh at the wall. So pretty well dead last. But for me, I swim with my eyes closed. Uh, and that, again, just helps me, I guess, stick to what I need to do and trust my process is almost having my eyes closed. But when I come into the turn, I open them up and I could see I was definitely in striking range of Matt Richards and the guys that were close to me. Obviously, there's a fair bit of splashing going on. So I definitely couldn't see the two outside boys in Grousset and... Um, Alex uh so had no idea how quick they went out um but I think that last 50 I just I felt energized I felt really strong I felt really good I knew that I'd swam well for that first 75 meters so that last 25 meters I had the energy that I needed to to get my hand on the wall as fast as I possibly could and you know it's always a gamble you never really know where you are in the race um until until the race is done and you get to look up at the scoreboard and and see what time you went and what position you've come. And yeah, there's definitely no better feeling than seeing number one next to your name and being able to, I guess, enjoy that moment, knowing that you're on top of the world and the fastest hundred freestyler in in the entire world and getting to sit on the lane rope and um, take it all in was, I gave it the Sammy short special. He's been doing the double Cobras all year and uh, to be able to do that and kind of, pay a little bit of a tribute to him or respect to him and give, give it that one was, I thought was pretty funny. And um, yeah, I, I just really enjoyed my moment and enjoyed my time in that race and um, was lucky enough to get my hand on the wall first and lucky it went my way this time. I know there's been times where it hasn't gone my way and I haven't been able to get my t- hand on the wall first. And I've, you know, been the bridesmaid by such fractional margins, but to be able to, yeah, finally stand on top again and, um, seven years after Rio was, um, yeah, it's a memory that I'll cherish for a very long time. And it kind of just, 
makes all that hard work and sacrifice that's been over this past period uh, worthwhile. Congrats, man. That's, <laughs> that's, that's really great to hear. And uh, I was excited for you. Uh, you were on my swim, swim fantasy draft team. So selfishly, I was excited for that too. <laughs> I did see that before the competition started. So that was the extra fuel, fuel of the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, uh, I appreciate that. But, uh, so, and then, you know, after that, you still had a, a big program. You were, you were in the four by two, um, you were in the mixed free relay and then you were in the medley relay, all of which meddled. Um, to, you know, we've, we've seen some years you've been in the four by two and some years you haven't, um, what, what was, what tipped the scales this year to where you felt, uh, confident and good about being a member of that finals relay? To be honest, I don't know whether I was confident about it. I was quite nervous. I, that was my fourth 200 freestyle I've done since, um, the Tokyo Olympics long course. So I was, I was very stressed. One of those times that I swam was about 153, I think, um, in Sydney earlier in the year. So um, last year I wasn't able to do it because uh, I didn't swim it at trials. So Swimming Australia said no when I when I asked to be a part of it. Um, so I knew that it was going to take something very special for us to get a medal in that that event this year, and I knew I had to be on. So for me, um, I did find that race very, very challenging, but I gave everything I had and I'm so happy to, to walk away with a 145-1 and, um, you know, win a, win a bronze medal for Australia again. It was, it was special. I think next year will be challenging because it's on the same night as the 100 freestyle semi-final. So it always makes it a challenging double, um, before the 100 freestyle final. That's if all goes to plan. Um, but yeah, so. So yeah, got got to be in that that team this year. I swam and swam a heat at trials just to post the time and be a part of it. And I was lucky that uh, Vince Rally, the the coach of the relay team, had faith in me to not swim the heat and just put me straight in the final. And I was definitely very nervous and stressed about it. But I've swam so many two hundreds in my career that um, my mindset flicked straight over as soon as I dove in the pool. I think I probably stopped thinking, and my my body just took control of that race. And um, I swam second and there were so many guys that swam second that swam so fast, like Carson, the American boy next to me, swam was 144. And, um, you know, when I touched, I think we were in fourth position. So I thought I had a shocker, but it was just that everyone in that second position swam so well. Um, and then again, and then after that race, it was about resetting the mind because I knew that the mixed 401 freestyle, we'd won the year before and we were the defending champs and there was a lot of hype Um about us winning again and a lot of expectation that we should win by quite some some margin. So I knew I had to swim my to do my part and swim my job and uh definitely very fatigued. That was probably the the hardest night for me physically um and probably and mentally and emotionally too, like coming off of you know becoming a world champion in the hundred freestyle the following night four by two where I had to give everything to swim an event I'm not overly comfortable or confident in. Sorry. And then the following night, I have that event. Um, I was definitely running pretty low on energy that night. But I've got two two girls in that relay who uh, split the fastest times in the world that, that year. Molly had been broken a world record almost every night. She dove in the pool, and then Jack Cartwright swimming at his best again after so many years was, um, you know, gave me that confidence and energy I needed to to do my job for the team and to break a world record and be world champions in that. Um, was a very special feeling. And then the last night, like five five nights of consecutive racing, you know, like I think people struggle to understand, you know, like we finish our race. Like for me, after my 100 freestyle, I did one hour of media commitments, did my medal presentation. By the time then you go back and you swim down to get ready for the next day, sometimes get a little bit of a massage, whatnot, do a drug test. That that's you get a test most night if you um win a medal. So by the time you finish a drug test, get back on the bus, whatnot, it's close to midnight, if not after midnight, have some dinner at the hotel, unpack your bag, get ready for bed. It's you, you're getting you're going to sleep maybe, you know, 2 a.m., 2 30 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, so it does get very, very tiring and challenging backing that up. So five nights of racing in a row for that medley relay i was lucky again i got rested for the heat um i wouldn't have been able to do two that day i think and i knew that i had to give everything for us in that final to um to win a medal and for us to get a bronze medal was was a gold medal for us because it means we don't we've got that automatic olympic qualification in the medley relay now so we don't have to to go to doha in february um and yeah it was 
we haven't we haven't won a medal in that event in quite some time and it's an event that I I love it's it's the last night of competition you know 90% of the team's done racing and they're in the stand so it's always super loud when the Australian team gets called out and um I've always swam some pretty good times in the medley relay so um yeah it was so special to to get a medal with the boys and stand on the podium for for one last time in in Fukuoka and um, to come away with five medals that definitely exceeded my expectations. Yeah. Well, I mean, but what a meet for you. What a meet for Australia. Uh, I've got some follow-up questions. First off, you mentioned world champs in, in Doha. Do you, do you think that's something you might attend? Well, it's a meeting that I'll have uh, with my coach in the next couple of weeks. At the moment, I've got three weeks off. So uh, I'm trying not to to think about swimming all that much at the moment. I'm just enjoying being human, being a person at the moment, you know, kind of doing the things I love to do with the people I love to do it with. And then um, as soon as I get back into the pool, it'll be a conversation I have with with my coach. Obviously, Doha is perfect in the sense that it's only one flight for us from Adelaide to get to. It's still, um, still a fair way, but at least it's just, you know, you can fly Adelaide, Doha. I'm, I'm not sure of the exact time. I'm, I'm assuming it's somewhere between nine and 12-hour flights, so it's still a long way, but... Um, and it's always good to to race fast and race against the best in the world uh, early in the season. So I think there's a there's a good chance that I will do it. But um, yeah, we'll see see how it plays. What the plan is next year uh, in terms of training camps and what's going to be best to best prepare myself for the Olympic Games. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the second question: You talked about your racing and and how tiring that can get how exhausting that can get um you've obviously done many many meets like that you know from world champs com games olympics um the list goes on you know you've done a long a lot of long meets um where do you i mean i'm guessing it's just you know consistent training but can you speak to the preparation that goes into you know i feel like for distance swimmers it's just like well you do a lot of yardage and then you can, you're able to race for eight days. But I, I, you know, for, for someone who does shorter events, um, I'm guessing it's, it's a little bit different, a little more nuanced than just, you know, swimming a lot, um, to prepare you for not only racing at your best, but racing at your best over, you know, a week plus. Yeah, it's a, it's a massive challenge and it doesn't get any easier as you get older. Unfortunately, I think as you start to, um, to get a little bit older, your body definitely recovers a lot slower and it does become more challenging to back up. So for me this year, it was a lot more, I, I, I consider myself a very professional athlete, especially in those situations in terms of I'll do my own stretching and I'll take the extra time to do more swim off just to make sure like I might be in there for 1500 or two Ks just to, to swim as much as I possibly can. And, uh, but it is challenging, you know, being primed and tapered to race day one, knowing that we need something so special to to win a win a medal in the four by one freestyle, and then being primed to race day eight too. So that's a that's a long time to be up for um, physically. So for me, you know, I raced day one, and then day two and three was all about. I had to do some gym just to can make sure I stayed stayed strong. Uh, I had to do do the training that I would normally do to stay, you know, fit and energized and active. But I guess all the hard work is done uh, in the lead up to that in training. Like it's about, for me, it's about swimming well on a Monday night when I roll into training. I'll train Monday morning, but Monday night's our first key session of the week and I have to swim fast there. But then I also have to swim fast on Saturday morning as well. Like it's about being consistent across those sessions. It's not about having one good session a week or, you know, it's all about having four really good key sessions per week. So I'm kind of practicing what I'm going to be doing when I'm at a competition. And again, it's also about, you know, when we do our trainings, it might be hitting set number one. You've got to be, if not, you got to be good on set four, but you've got to be faster than you even started that. So it's just about that consistency, I think, in training. So that your body's always practicing being, yeah, good day one, good day eight, or good at the start of the set finish even better than you started the set. Um, you're just practicing those good behaviors and whatnot. And um, I think I found a lot of tips and tricks to deal with long competitions in terms of, you know, like I said, just cooling down, taking that extra time to cool down or warm up to make sure your body's in good position. Um, with my shoulder injuries, it's I've got to make sure I'm warming up and activating myself to the best of my ability. So I take a long time to 
do all my cords and dry land and uh, whatnot before I go in the pool. I take the extra time to have a massage. Um, a lot of the guys use ice bath. I don't use ice bath, but um, you know, I'll go back to my bedroom and I'll and I'll stretch. Um, I'll use my my massage balls or foam rollers in the in the room to just combat it um, and just stay mentally fresh too. Like I'll speak to all my family and friends back home on Facetime. I'll I'll go on social media and interact with my friends and whatnot as well, just to distract myself from swimming because obviously we're on the other side of the world in a hotel room and it gets quite lonely and boring at times so you got to make sure you stay mentally fresh for for eight days straight and um put yourself in the best possible position to race day in day out but um but yeah i think as a 25 year old my body definitely doesn't recover as well as it used to as a as an 18 year old when i first did in rio yeah which is which is funny because i mean you know 25 is, is still not that old for for a swimmer uh but you've just been, <laughs> you've been doing this at, at, a, at, at the top level for so long. Um, mm. that's another thing I wanted, I was curious about, you know, you've kind of seen a complete changing of the guard. We, we talked about this earlier, um, on team Australia, and I'm guessing your role has mm. changed quite a bit. You know, like you said, in Rio, you were 18 years old and kind of a newcomer. You'd gone to worlds the year before, just as a relay swimmer, um, you know, now, you're winning, you're taking home five medals and I'm guessing you're, you're a pretty big voice and leader on that team. Um, and I'm curious what that experience has been like over these last couple of years being the seasoned veteran you are. Yeah, I would say that there's a lot of guys and someone like Flynn, who's just so eager to learn, like he'll, he'll reach out and he's, you know, going through that experience with me in the heat and then the semifinal when, He's messaging what time I go on the bus, what I'm eating, what I'm doing for the day, when I should get in for my warm up, you know, like all these questions. And Kai Taylor being in the marching room with him and having that relay on the first day is another young kid coming through. And then Sam Short's another one of the young guys that I spend a lot of time with. And they're three guys that are eager to learn and want to want to learn from me, which I um, which I love. I love being able to kind of hand on you know, the knowledge that I've learned over the years to these guys. And if I can play, a, have a slight impact on them and help help it be a little bit easier for them, it's um, it's definitely, you know, I think when I first came into the scene, it was a bit more challenging, a bit more, someone like James Magnuson's one of, one of my great mates now, but was, you know, daunting coming into that. He was, he saw me as a rival. Um, whereas I don't see these young kids as rivals. I see them as teammates and how I can um, better their swimming careers and help them get ready for the future because I'm not going to be around forever and it's it's their job to to take over from me very soon. And um, so I, I really, really enjoy yeah, giving back to the younger kids and I love I love these guys that have enthusiasm about swimming and want to learn and I, lo- I love swimming. I'm so passionate about it. So if I'm able to help to that, that even that tiniest bit, then um, I know that I've done my job and hopefully going to leave the team in a better place. Yeah, which is, which is I think, an admirable mindset to have. Um, mm. So kudos to you, Kyle. <laughs> but well, uh, so, you know, you, you mentioned earlier that you, you feel like you're in the best place, best shape that you've been in in your career. Um, you know, kind of going back to that consistency and training, um, what do you feel like has gone right for you this season in terms of training and, and how, how how have you built that base to put yourself in uh, the best shape of your career? Well, I knew that I could have a really good this uh, good year this year just in terms of injury. Like I've managed to stay injury free for the first year in Pretty well. Twenty twenty was obviously COVID, and I spent most of the year injured uh, with my shoulder and couldn't swim whatsoever. And then twenty twenty one, it took me until pretty well March to get back in the pool properly before the Olympics. And then after the Olympics, I ended up doing my other shoulder and was kind of managing that through ISL and World Cups until I had surgery again on that. So last year meant that I was recovering from surgery and kind of trying to fight my fight my way back again. Whereas this year, um, you know, as soon as World Short Course was out of the way and uh, I got back in the pool at the start of January, I've been able to stay completely injury free, which has been amazing. Like you take it for granted uh, when you're not injured, like it's it's injuries just so challenging, not just physically, but mentally, you know, like 
just kind of always being in pain and not being able to do the things I love to do and the things I need to do to be able to have success. So no injury this year, being able to do the training that I've I've needed to do, being able to get a bit stronger in the gym, like I'm probably a couple kilos heavier than what I've raced at in previous years, but that's just from the muscle I've been able to build, um, which I think's helped take the that load off of my shoulders a bit, just having the muscles and little everything strengthened around there. Um, but I think mentally just being in such a good place this year um, has also helped. Like I've kind of found myself away from the pool a lot this year. Like I've, I've challenged myself to put myself out there and, you know, um, be on a building site two days a week um, doing some, some laboring as a, as a builder has been um, the best for me. Like just a different circle of people uh, I've, I've never worked worked before so being able to put myself in a uncomfortable environment at times where I don't know what I'm doing but experiencing the real world has been so good and it's distracted me from swimming a lot so I'm able to go to work and just be Kyle Chalmers the person rather than the swimmer and just spending a lot more time with my friends and family also like you know just committing myself to going out for dinner with mates having mates come over here on the weekends kind of being a whole lot more social has been um yeah, be- very beneficial for me in the pool. I've just been trying to be Kyle Chalmers, the person, um, you know, rather than completely focusing all my energy into swimming. And um, it's definitely definitely worked for me this year. And I'm so lucky to have Matt Temple as a great mate and training partner who has probably challenged me in that area also because he's uh, very unable to sit still. So us going to work's been good. And then I bought a fishing boat. So I've been doing a lot of fishing uh, whenever I get a free free chance and, yeah, just been been doing heaps of things that has been been really good in the pool. That's great to hear. Uh, yeah, in terms of uh, building two days a week, um, how what how did how did you uh decide to go in that direction? Well, for me, I, I've tried uni a couple of times, so I I enrolled in psychology at one stage and did a couple of subjects in that, and then I transferred across to sport and recreation management. But for me. I'm a person that's unable to sit still. I've got too much energy, even when I'm uh, fully fatigued. I just want to want to do something like sitting on the couch is not my thing. Watching movies is not my thing, and studying was just not for me whatsoever. So, um, I tried that, didn't work. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of it's been a question that I've struggled with a lot over the years is when people have asked me what are you going to do after swimming or what do you do outside of swimming I've never known how to answer that question because I didn't know what was next for me so I've done some soul searching I guess over the over the period especially being injured like when swimming can be taken away from you so quickly like there was periods where I didn't know whether I was going to be able to get back to swimming or swimming to my best so it's like well what happens if I can't do this what am I going to do and um i i de- desperately one day want to move home to the country port lincoln like where i grew up and play footy on the weekends and be a builder during the week so i kind of started telling people that i want to do some sort of building and um met with my accountant and he asked that exact question to me like what are you going to do after swimming and i said well i want to be a builder and he said well i know a guy that will have you on site whenever you want to come out there and end up getting a call that day from from the boss and uh yeah he he took us out there and um i've probably never been so nervous in my life just putting put you know putting the high vis on and getting out of my getting out of my car uh out the front of a work site like never been on a work site in my life um never done anything like that before so i was i was very very nervous and after the first day of doing it i fell in love with it and um i think it's just uh, a great lifestyle and something that i really look forward to doing doing once I'm done with swimming, you know, like they start at seven, finish up at 3 p.m. You kind of physically working with your hands all day, every day. And um, I've had the best kind of four or five months doing that now. And I can't wait to, to get back to work, um, you know, just see all the boys and 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 contribute to Adelaide's infrastructure. <laughs> that's that. I mean, that's so cool to hear. Um, once again, congrats. That's, um, you know, just from a mental health perspective, that's that's so cool finding something that that works for you and and that takes your mind off of sport um i'm I'm kind of curious how your coach you know does he have to adjust training at all uh because because it is you know physical labor yeah no he he hasn't adjusted training at all there's been times where he said maybe you shouldn't go to work this week or like the lead up to the world championship so i had the week off of work um 
because it is physically draining. Like we're we're only there for five and a half hours on a Tuesday, then five and a half hours on a Thursday. So it's not a huge amount of time, but that in that period of time, we're doing a lot of physical work. Like we're working on a three story house at the moment, so we're kind of lifting all the pieces of wood from the first floor up to the second floor, and then onto the third floor. It's kind of doesn't move itself unfortunately and um being pretty unskilled my job is uh moving a lot of the heavy stuff so um he was my coach has always challenged me to find something outside of the pool and um he I think he was so proud of me for doing that and putting myself in that situation this year and finally committing to do it because it's something I've probably said over a lot over the last you know seven years is that I will do something away from the pool um but I finally done it and I think he couldn't be prouder and I'm so lucky to have such a supportive coach in that sense that he realizes that there's so much more to life than just swimming and he's so supportive of of what I do and um we have such a healthy great relationship in that sense uh so you know moving forward um like you said you've been with your coach for so long you guys know each other uh really well you have a great relationship it sounds like training's going well um what are you looking forward to this upcoming season? It's, you know, your third, your third lead up into an Olympic games. Um, what do you, do you change anything? Do you keep it the same? Uh, what's it, what's it going to look like for you? Yeah, I think it always, it always has to change. You always have to be adaptable. You always have to freshen up the mind a little bit. And my coach has always been very good with that, just freshening things up. Um, so for me, yeah, I'm, I'm unsure how it is going to look just yet. I know that, um, he'll come up with something creative in terms of training camps and whatnot. And you kind of have that idea and general structure of how training is going to look. But I think for me, as I am getting older, you know, there's going to be hopefully some weekends that I get to have off and go home to Paul Lincoln to my grandparents and my family to reset every now and then. And um, just continue to build on what I've done this year in terms of building my life away from the pool and finding my happiness in that. And, distracting myself a little bit because obviously there's going to be a whole lot of pressure and expectation leading into an Olympic Games. Um, that's when, you know, especially in Australia, everyone's ears perk up about the Olympics coming up and want to talk to you and you become a bit more of a social figure, I guess, um, in, in Australia. Like, the you know, Adelaide's a small, pretty small place, really. Like, I'm a um, pretty well-known athlete here, I guess, especially in the swimming world. So um, people want to show a little bit more passion and curiosity leading into the Olympics. So it's going to be challenging. I know, but my coach is the best person for that. And he understands that. And um, yeah, I think um, this next little period is just going to be having a little bit of fun with swimming, um, analyzing what, what was good in, um, in Fukuoka and what was bad and finding those little areas I can improve on, you know, my, my dive still an area that I want to excel at and get better at, um, I want to be able to hold a little bit more water when I'm swimming as well. So I know that, you know, these next few months I'm going to be working hard at that. And then my mindset will get focused completely on Paris and um, I'll lock in. Yeah. Uh, so to wrap things up, how was playing footy this weekend? <laughs> Again, it was, um, I grew up in Matt, like obviously my dad played professionally and then my whole junior life was, was revolved around football. Like my dad, um coached at that at our club and mum was you know worked at the club and we were me and my brother were always very heavily involved like my weekends were um you know I'd play in the underage games and then I'd run the water in the older grades and um be the runner so run out the messages to the the other players um in the you know the senior level games and then go up the club for a for a meal that night and whatnot and country football um, means the world to country people. Like that's their, that's their biggest thing. That's the Olympics. You know, like I go back to Port Lincoln um, this, this last few days and swimming's already forgotten about no one saying good job at world championships or congratulations. It's all about, Oh yeah, I hear you're playing football this week for Lincoln South and all about football. That's what everyone's life revolves around over there. So for me, just being able to be back involved in it to an extent. I only played for five minutes. I went out there for, I didn't play at all in the first half. I went out there for five minutes in the third quarter. Um, and I had the best day of my life. Like just being, being there watching the juniors, just signing signatures and taking photos with all the local kids and um, just helping them realize, I guess that there is a, you can transition from being in the country to a city and be a professional athlete. And they've just got to believe that they can do it. And if I can create that pathway a little bit and help them understand and just be, 
just be accessible in my community. It's um, important to me. So to be out there and show my face and it means so much to the community and it meant so much to me being able to be out there and go up the club and have dinner. And my grandparents were there and my mum come across from Adelaide and just all my friends and family, like they're all the guys that I played football with when I was 13 years old uh, over in Port Lincoln. So to do it again, you know, 10 years later um, was so special to me. I did it, played a game last year for, for another team, but to play for my team back home was a memory that I'm going to cherish for a very long time. And I'm a human under, under all the, well, in, in the, you know, people see me in my swimming cap and racing suit and I look probably pretty robotic on race day, but I'm a human and I've got to have some fun and do what I love to do. And I think, yeah, sad day. I've never, I've never been happier. It was just the best, the best thing I could possibly do to unwind from the world championships, decompress and be with the people that love me most and have known me since I was, you know, two, three years old. Absolutely, man. I, I love the message. I'm a human. I think a lot of people forget that very easily. Um, you know, myself as a member of the media, I think we can get very caught up in, like you said, numbers and thinking people <laughs> are, are robotic and or robots. Yeah. Um, so I just congrats on that piece uh, on being able to unwind, being able to celebrate with the people that, uh, that matter most to you. That's, I, I think that, you know, that might be more important than winning world titles, right? So, Oh, absolutely. That's... I think for me, definitely, like it's always, it's always nice to win in Japan and world championship, but to, to get home and see the people that I love and be able to see how much it means to them and celebrate with those people and reflect. And like I said, the people that have been with me since day one, um, there's no better feeling. It's it's the best getting off the plane over in Port Lincoln and just being surrounded by my loved ones and my friends and family. And um, that's the, that's the memories that I cherish the most. Well, one, once again, congrats. Um, that's, yeah. that's really awesome to hear. And uh, thank you for taking the time to sit down and chat with me today. It's been great having a catch up. Uh, any parting thoughts for our audience before we sign off today? No, I appreciate it. I appreciate the audience always. There's always some, um, a lot of support which is nice and i appreciate the relationship i've got with you mate i think um you do a very good job for the swimming community we're all very grateful for you so to be able to debrief with you is always always special and um yeah thanks to all the the supporters for another great year in the pool and um hopefully can uh have another one next year You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.